My name is Jacqueline Coley, and I'd like to welcome you all to the first interview with the cast from Disney's The Little Mermaid. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Uh, Hallie, I have to start with you because you are playing and singing Ariel in Disney's The Little Mermaid, joined by an all-star cast of Emmy, Tony, Oscar winners, Grammy winners, directed yeah. by Rob Marshall. Tell me what it was like when he called you and told you that that dream was coming true. Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, I'm just so grateful to be in the midst of these wonderful human beings oh. who during the filming process was just amazing people to be around. Um, it's a really a dream come true. Rob Marshall is the best. When he called me, I didn't believe it. <laughs> he was like, Ariel? This is how he told me because when I answered the phone, he goes, is this Ariel? Am I speaking to Ariel? And I'm like, what? <laughs> So it What's just... weird is he said that to me Did too. Did he see? Of course yes. he would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's such a like Rob thing to do. <laughs> but it was amazing. Yeah. Oh so God. it's just weird. The whole thing is weird and amazing. And <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would see him actually doing that as well, because that is, I've interviewed him for Mary Poppins and other things. I mean, this is the guy that did Chicago. This is Rob Marshall. He literally dances everything. And Melissa, I do have to feel when you joined the cast, it was probably kindred spirits because I feel like everything Rob does is theatrical, but I do have to feel, it was also emotional. Like I, as she was talking, I was listening to Hallie Tear Up and I was thinking, she just does that. I heard just her singing voice, like it had you oh tearing Oh my God. Up. And I really had to, it was the first day and the first time that you were just kind of marking the spot, Rob was like, will you just, will you just sit and sing a little bit of it so Melissa no one knows when it comes on? And then I started crying day one. So I'm like, I'm cool. <laughs> I, I, I cry a lot when people sing, but it did. And then they, once they played it, like her recorded one through the thing, we were all crying. And I thought, this is going to be difficult to get through. Mm. It's just, it really is, it, 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 there's something so beautiful about it. And you've made it so your own. And it was every moment of, of that in the, in the Rob Marshall magical world is uh, pretty dreamy. I mean, it really is. Looking at this cast, like, I'm just happy to be here, like, filling out this <laughs> loveliness on here. I can't imagine what it's going to look like to see you guys in this new technology. But, Aquafina, I have to ask you, um, I feel like this was, like, a fan campaign that came to life, like, legit. Oh. Like, oh. you really wanted that Scuttle. That was by me. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> I mean, like, you know, but legitimately, I know that you've made it very well known how you feel about Scuttle, and uh, you were very, very vocal about that early on. But yeah, talk about, about this. Because again, I don't think that was, to that joke, um, the first thought that most people would have, but I, and now I can't see anybody else. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Well, no, I, I take that as a, truly take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. I, you, uh, you made it your own, is yes. what I'm saying. You made it your own. Yeah, and, and I think there's something that, that, that obviously, like, about Scuttle that I, I really identify with, Lo love Scuttle, and, and to be a, a part of, like, this cast as Scuttle is, is um, yes, it's very, it's very intense. Was cool. he your favorite character? I thought we had read that he was like, like literally like childhood, like from the first thing, because most girls are going for Ariel, so again. No, I'm going for <laughs> Scuttle. Like, I, no, that's it. But as I'm watching Little Mermaid growing up, I, I'm, I'm like, Scuttle is, is everything. Um, yeah, the uh, definitely was one of my favorite characters. I loved Buddy Hackett's performance in, in the original, so when, when you know, we, we got that call and we got the Ariel, we, we, you know, it was like, it was like, uh, I, I really couldn't believe it. But. I want you to just keep redoing Buddy Hackett roles. I love that. <laughs> I mean, that would mean the world to me personally. <laughs> it's very niche, yeah, but you can do it. <laughs> so, you know, and, cool. yeah. I love Make it. your dreams. <laughs> Live your dreams. David, I will have to say, both with you, Aquafina, I think everyone's kind of part of the Disney family, but again, it seems like they're they're giving y'all extra innings very quickly between Shang-Chi and then also with Soul, like you're you're doing the Pixar moving on to this. Yeah. But in this one, you also bring some Hamilton connections as well because you get to play Sebastian with the man who named his kid after the character. Yeah. That's probably a, a nice little Hamilton reunion. So cool. <laughs> I mean, working with Lynn is always the 
best because there's like a really solid shorthand right now, you know? <laughs> like uh, he'll bring a song in and be like, you do the thing where, yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> yes, so then I'm going to, mm hmm, all right, cool. And then we just do it. Because um, it's been a lot of years now of making silly rap songs together. So that's kind of the. <laughs> a little more than silly, you know, just winning yeah, venues. Winning <laughs> what have you guys done together? <laughs> <laughs> Was it open in New York? Yeah, I never, yeah, I never yeah, heard of it. Off, off. Yeah. Uh, off, off. Yeah. <laughs> But Holly, there's some incredible collaborators with this entire sort of thing. I mean, we have Alan Minkie returning to do the I score mean. and then add more and all yeah. bringing Lynn with it, obviously Rob Marshall. But just the reality of how you guys are doing this is something that they haven't really talked about either. So can you at least like take us into the part of your world a little bit? Like how was this adaptation done? Like was it all voice? Like how did you sort of blend the two? Yeah, well, musically, because I'm a musician first, so Alan Menken being in the midst of him and just this beautiful score of this film was like just amazing for me. Getting to sing these songs that we've all known since I was, you know, little is crazy. Um, and then just kind of getting to make Ariel mine in a way is really a beautiful thing. I was stunned that they were able to take me, half of me, and mm. the rest CGI and like show the real me and who I am and uh, weave it into this kind of just fantasy world of just beauty and adventure. And it was interesting when filming because half of the time, I mean, Aquafina and Dave, David, they did their uh, voice recordings uh, before I did my filming. So when you I heard, yeah, so oh, when man. I was That's acting, crazy. with the puppets, yeah, when right? I was acting, was yeah, I would yeah, be wow. acting with the puppets. Oh my God. So it would be me on a blue screen on this huge stage by myself, a whole big camera crew, and I would hear them in my ears, oh but like God. the little puppeteers would be acting with me. And so oh. your voices became so comforting to me because oh, you were my I, only friends. I was begging Rob yeah. to come back. I was yeah. like, bring me back, man. I want to just yeah. stand behind the puppet. Let me just be I yeah. because I wanted to watch you work yeah. some more. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. like, bring so me back. It was a really beautiful experience, but it was cool because they became like my home in my ears. And then when Melissa came, I was like, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a person. Yeah. <laughs> well, Melissa, I do have to say too, uh, talking about Rob Marshall, I mean, he's an award-winning choreographer and so much of what Ursula does is movement. I mean, talk about him. I mean, also, let's be honest, everybody wants to sing your big villain number. I mean. <laughs> and to get that sort of like, I think both vocal performance with the choreography, I mean, he did make you do it as you were performing it on live. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. Sure, and that, I mean, it's my, my fantasy world in my head, I'm a singer and a dancer, and I love, I love being around dancers. I love that whole world so much. And so just getting to pretend and immerse myself in that, it's just so funny because dancers just dance. Like when they're talking to you, they're like, you know the thing when you do the thing? <laughs> and everybody watching as I'm doing it, dancers can't not mark your moves. So I'm looking out and John's doing the move and Rob's doing the moves. And sometimes John just throws himself down on the ground. He's like, can you do a roll like this? <laughs> And I'm like, he's just rolling around on the ground. <laughs> it's fantastic. And to be able to do that song, and it's like the like the broad that lives inside of me, I was like, she, she she's Ursula. Oh. So like getting to, to be her was just like, it was delicious. You definitely like get to live in your Aunt Mame realness for uh. it. Like that is like <laughs> oh so great. Yeah. But the orchestra, you also had the live orchestra, both of you. Like that, I think, adds a completely different depth to it. So talk about that part of it if you can. Well, this is her, I mean, not to, can you imagine if I only make like bad puns? This is her world. <laughs> uh, I meant that literally, not as a, as a pun. But uh, I, you know, this is such new territory and I was back in this tiny room and nobody could see me and the orchestra was, was out and they were so impressive. It's just wild to watch that many beautiful musicians just like do their thing. And Rob came and got me and he was like, I want you to come sing with the orchestra. I want you to stand in the room and feel what that feels like. And I was like, no, 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 no. Cause they're gonna know, they're gonna know, and I shouldn't do that. And I don't wanna disrupt them. And he's like, if you, you may never feel it again, you have to experience once. And it, it really was, it was one of the most magical things I've ever gotten to do. And it, he, was, he was right, as he always is, that like the feeling of those instruments and being in that room, I was just like, this is something I'll, I will cherish forever. 
Yeah. Meanwhile, David and I in the booth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that came for uh, quite yeah. The, well, yeah. I mean, the love fire in the booth. <laughs> I will also say too, Aquafina, I want to give you this because as we talk about the music, I don't want you to feel left out with Scuttle because he does have a musical moment. I think hopefully if we get to see that sort of revisited, but these guys have like showstoppers. So I want to ask you this though: What's your Disney showstopper? Like because I do feel like from now on. Anytime you go to a karaoke bar, they're gonna hand each one of you the mic <laughs> right, right. to kind of like do the thing. So like Aquafina, I want to give you your hand the mic moment. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> my Disney showstopper. Yes. Like okay, all right. This is your Disney song. Like, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Go, I, I, karaoke I, style. Part of your world, definitely. Yes. It's, a, yes. it's a banger. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, and 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 then I also I really like um, the colors of the wind. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's wow. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I could I could dig yeah, on that one, one too. Yeah. Okay, besides the one that you have, if you could pick another to be like Disney show style, like a go-to karaoke song for you. Again, you're gonna be singing yours a lot, so I'll give you like an alternate, David, if you want one. Well, I don't, you know, <laughs> I'm not really qualified to hit many of the showstoppers, <laughs> I don't think, but I'm a big fan of like the, like everybody wants to be a cat. Like I like I like yeah. all the, you know, apocryphal Disney movies are kind uh, of my one. So Aristocats is actually my favorite. I wow. yes. That, uh, That's a good one. I want to make sure I give you both the opportunity before I, I'm, I'm hoping that this last part doesn't make us cry too much and I want to get some giggles in first. Oh. So, oh. <laughs> so what uh -oh. you think? Yeah. Remember grandma? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know. She just really takes it down. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, you, I'm trying. I'm basically trying to hype myself up so I don't start crying. Cause we're gonna talk about Beyonce, and that's an emotional moment. <laughs> so, what's your Disney song though? If it wasn't Poor Unfortunate Souls, um, I would. If I could, I would love to do a dead on thing of Snow White when she's like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that would be that whole great. thing. That's a good one. How, again, I'm, I'm gonna go, I, I kind of teased it a bit because you now join the Disney princess pantheon and there's some very <laughs> illustrious people you get to join. You get to join people like Anika Noni Rose, you get to join people like, you know, Vanessa Williams sang a song for a Disney princess. Yeah. But I think all of us, when we got to see Beyonce as Nala and the Lion King, we're like, yeah, now, now, now yeah. Beyonce's a Disney princess too. And you actually had the benefit of maybe being able to text someone after you got the part <laughs> to be like, just so you know. <laughs> I'm gonna be Ariel. I'm just curious, did she give you an advice joining in the in the Disney? Because she also has experience with this entire process. Yeah. So she is just such an amazing, genuine hu human being. And I remember when I first got the role, she, you know, she's so proud of me, super excited, but she's like all about me just taking a stand for myself and speaking up for myself and not being afraid. And I'm like, I grew up in a big family. I'm, I'm the baby of the girls, so I'm always like shy and a bit timid. Sometimes it's harder for me to speak up. So she's like, no, you can do this. You go in there, you be strong. And you know, she's just wonderful, so. I love that so much. And I do love it. We had a great interview with you at D23 where you talked about the fact that you singing a part of your world felt like a healing moment for you, like healing your inner child. And I just want you to expand on that because I thought that was such a powerful way to put it that you wished you'd been able to see this representation back then. Yeah, I mean, it's so important because Little Mermaid was my favorite movie when I was little. Me and my sister, every time we'd go in the pool, we'd just pretend we're mermaids, we'd swim. And, you know, when I first saw the script and was gonna audition, I just thought to myself, you know, there's no way I'm going to be cast because the version of me that I have of Ariel is the one that we all have of her when she's younger and, um, you know, her red hair, her pale skin. I'm like, that's Ariel. It's not me. Yeah. So getting to take on this new role and kind of make her mine in a way is really special. And seeing all of the beautiful black and brown babies reactions just makes me cry and sob because I feel for my little girl inside and, um, it just makes me emotional, but it's really exciting and um, yeah, just a blessing. I don't know if that answered it, but that answers it, and it bit. also got the misties going, which is yeah. exact. See, I oh, told no. you. No, no, no. <laughs> I knew it. David, I definitely want to talk to you specifically about Sebastian because again, he's he's the he's the director. He gets the, he gets the bops in a lot of the ways, but mm -hmm. I think you said that you know, despite the familiarity with Lynn, this was the hardest role you've had to do, which is saying a lot because you do like a lot of verbal exercises in Hamilton that I would think is really hard. I don't know how this was be harder. No, I don't. I don't, I don't really sing like that, but also like, I, I, there's just a, it just, there's a, an, an, a weight 
to this role. You know what I'm saying? This little crab carries a lot of weight in my memory. <laughs> you know, he's such a, he looms so large. Um, and so it's, I just, I did more work for this than anything I've ever done. I'm not like a research guy. And I was, I have, I was in Jamaica and in Trinidad and like talking to Calypsonians and like, you know, like just like really trying to immerse myself in like, whoa, which island is Sebastian from? Like, what sort of training did he have? Where did he go to school? If he's like, you know, yeah. British educated and came back, what does that mean? Like, and yeah. how does that affect his voice? Obviously, because we're just doing voices and stuff. So, but I, I don't know. It was so much fun because um, that is a big part. We don't like really understand it as a big part of how how human beings like interact like your voice is so integral to who you are yeah. mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. actually focusing all of my energy just on that not having to worry about okay what am I doing with my hands like uh was was exciting and really fun but then also all of a sudden I was like oh no I've opened this this <laughs> Pandora's box like this is an endless yeah. an endless rabbit hole and uh yeah, so it it was it, it was fun, but it was a lot. It was a lot of work. If you had to choose between uh, "Kiss the Girl" or or "Under the Sea," which one was the one where you worked the hardest between those two songs? Probably "Under the Sea," but only just because like I kept wanting to do it again. It was just like <laughs> so many. The the lyrics in both of those songs are amazing, but like the potential options in Under the Sea are crazy. And then also I had to record Under the Sea with Hallie doing her like improvs along with it, which yeah. were just like shattering my whole, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, just, like, wow. I'm over here like messing around. And, or I'm like, I'm like real focused. And then she comes in, like just some run like out of nowhere. And I was just like, well, wow. why, why would anyone listen to this? I don't know why. I <laughs> we just like cut. take the headphones off. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of we there. never saw her again. I know. <laughs> I mean, she's it, again. Your voice is very intimidating. We saw the trailer. Everybody oh my gosh, knew. You but right step. <laughs> Aww, in the best way possible. In the best way possible. But there's another presence that we didn't talk about that's not here that is also intimidating. Javier. I mean, oh. I mean, I just give me a quick, if you can, what's it like <laughs> to call that um, daddy and like the way you're supposed to. <laughs> I'll tell you. No. <laughs> Respectfully, I'm, I'm just talking nonsense. But um, yeah, just tell us about that. And uh, you can keep it how you want to, but we're gonna have yeah. a different picture. <laughs> no, Javier was so amazing. I had been a fan of him for so long, just like I have of these beautiful souls. And literally, I did not expect him to be like as kind as he was. I expected like a macho man, like, you know, and he is, but he's so like a teddy bear inside. Aww. So it was really amazing getting to know him and just having him be this father figure. It was cool because I got to compare him to my, you know, my real father is very overprotective and very King Triton-like. So yeah. I just felt like I was playing off of my own experience with my dad. Kind of scary scenes, I will say that. Yeah. I, I hope I hope folks uh, folks can, can tune in on that because that, yeah. Wait, yeah. I'll tell yeah. the story right quick. I <laughs> yeah. happened to be there at the day that Javier was doing his camera test mm -hmm. and we had just finished rehearsal and I don't know how y'all's camera tests were but his were him getting full dressed up in his full regalia and then them telling him to hold his breath and just dunking him underwater what? and then like what? zooming a camera in and oh, out around him and so yeah. like <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm watching him be like dipped in this tank of water and I'm looking at the screen and the camera's just like slowly panning around his face and I turned around and I was like I would watch this for oh, three and wow. a half hours. Yes. Like, what, this is the most interesting thing I've oh, ever wow. seen in my, it was so like amazing. Just wow. the power in that man's face. It was like. I, yeah. I know what you mean because before we would start, first of all, any movie that lets me have Javier as my brother, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. like let's do more. <laughs> but just watching him and he is, he's so, he leads with such kindness, but watching him, there's a reason who he, he is who he is. Before we were even going, I would find myself being like, hey, stop staring at him. Because it's getting creepy because I was just like, he's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. He's fascinating. What is he thinking? Yeah. He's, he just kind of exudes this, the, he's like so tethered to the earth. But I was doing the same thing where I really had to be like, cut it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting weird. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank I want to remind all of you that tickets for Disney's The Little Mermaid are on sale now.